Welcome back everyone, today, we're continuing with the next part of this series, called What If Goku Remembered the Saiyans? My name is Ash, please, for me, drop a like and subscribe to the page. Also leave your comments down below, with that, let's begin. Krillin narrowed his eyes, readying himself, as the hulking Rikum lumbered toward him. The giant red-headed warrior cracked his knuckles and grinned. You're going to die, little man, Rikum taunted his deep voice booming like thunder. Krillin smirked, despite the tension tightening his muscles. I'll pass on that, he said, his voice steady, masking the worry he felt. He knew this was going to be tough, but he had to stall them long enough for Tien to hide the Dragon Ball and for backup to arrive. Before Krillin could say anything else, Raccoon's massive form lunged forward, moving with surprising speed for someone his size. His fist aimed directly at Krillin's face, reacting just in time Krillin's red aura flared as he pushed his Kaioken to X3, narrowly dodging the blow, but not quite fast enough. Raccoon's punch glanced his face, sending Krillin flying backward. Krillin twisted mid-air, rolling with the impact, and managed to flip back onto his feet. He wiped a trickle of blood from his lip, his heart racing. That guy hits like a truck, he thought, but he didn't have time to dwell on it. Keeping his Kaioken active, he dashed back toward Raccoon, aiming a high-speed kick at the brute's head. Raccoon barely flinched. Raising his thick arm, he blocked the kick effortlessly, his grin widening. Before Krillin could retreat, Raccoon's knee shot up, aiming for his exposed back. Thinking fast, Krillin grabbed onto Raccoon's arm and swung his leg downward, blocking the incoming knee strike with his foot. Using the momentum, Krillin launched his other knee upward, smashing it into Raccoon's chin with a solid thud. Raccoon stumbled back, surprise flickering in his eyes as the force of the hit sent him flying into a nearby Namekian hut. The flimsy structure collapsed under his weight, burying him in rubble and dust. Krillin took a quick breath, his body aching from maintaining the Kaioken at such a high level. He wasn't sure how long he could keep this up, but for now, he had to stay focused. Meanwhile, Bardock soared through the skies, moving faster than he ever had before. The power Guru had unlocked within him surged through his veins, making him feel invincible. His senses were sharper, and he could feel three large energy signatures where Krillin and Tien were. Worry gnawed at him. He could still sense Krillin's energy, but Tien's had vanished, and that was a bad sign. Hang in there, guys, he thought, pushing himself to go faster. As he flew, something below caught his eye. Movement. He descended quickly and saw a familiar figure running across the terrain. Tien sprinted across the rocky ground his power level suppressed as low as possible to avoid detection. Flying would have been faster, but he knew it would make him a target for any scouter that picked him up. He had to be careful, especially with the Dragon Ball he was carrying. He could still sense Krillin's energy, burning bright and powerful. He's using the Kaioken, Tian thought, concern etching his face. But why hasn't he drawn them away from the village yet? Something wasn't right. Finding a suitable spot, Tien quickly dropped the Dragon Ball onto the ground, hiding it behind some large boulders. This should work for now, he thought, glancing back toward where Krillin was. He hesitated, torn between staying hidden and rushing back to help his friend. Suddenly, he felt a powerful energy approaching, but unlike the evil auras he'd sensed earlier, this one felt familiar. Tien turned just as the energy landed beside him, and his eyes widened in surprise. Bardock? Tien exclaimed shocked at the sight of the young warrior, but more than that, he was stunned by the sheer power Bardock was radiating. How'd you get so strong? Bardock wasted no time, no time to explain, he said quickly, his tone urgent. You need to take the Dragon Ball you have and head the way I came. Guru's place isn't far. Where's Guru's place? Tien asked, still processing the sudden appearance of Bardock. It's a Namekian house on top of a giant pillar. You can't miss it. Bardock explained hurriedly. My mom's waiting there with another Dragon Ball. Guru can help you get stronger, fast. Is that how you got this strong? Tien asked, his eyes narrowing as he tried to gauge just how much Bardock's power had grown. Yeah, Bardock confirmed with a sharp nod. But I don't have time to talk. Krillin needs help, and I'm going to back him up. Without waiting for a response, Bardock blasted into the air, speeding toward the battle where Krillin was facing the Ginyu force. Tien watched him go, still amazed at the power Bardock had gained, but he knew there was no time to waste. He had to get to Guru's place and unlock his own potential if they had any hope of winning this fight. With a determined look, 
Tien took off, heading in the direction Bardock had pointed him. Raccoon's massive body erupted in a blinding surge of energy, blasting the remains of the Namekian house into pieces. Debris flew everywhere, and Namekian civilians cowered in fear as they watched the terrifying display of power. But Krillin, despite the chaos around him, stayed calm, his focus razor sharp. Maybe I can take him, Krillin thought, his confidence growing as he sized up the Ginyu Force Brute. So far, the other members of the squad seemed content to watch from the sidelines. That was his only advantage. If all three jumped in, he knew he wouldn't stand a chance. Raccoon's furious roar snapped Krillin out of his thoughts. The massive warrior charged again, his feet thundering against the ground. Krillin quickly powered up, pushing his Kaioken to X3. His red aura flared brightly as he sprinted forward to meet Raccoon head on. Raccoon was the first to strike, swinging a heavy fist aimed at Krillin's midsection. Krillin ducked low, just barely avoiding the blow. He darted inside, getting close enough to attack where Raccoon's large frame couldn't fight comfortably. Krillin launched a flurry of rapid jabs at Raccoon's stomach, his fists connecting solidly. But despite the punches landing, they didn't seem to do much damage. Raccoon barely flinched, though he did backpedal slightly, trying to create some distance between them. This is my chance, Krillin thought. He leaped back, raising one hand into the air. His fingers sparked as he gathered energy in his palm, forming a glowing ball of light. The ball quickly condensed, flattening into a razor-thin disc. Destructo disc, Krillin shouted, hurling the spinning energy attack straight at Raccoon, who was only a few feet away. Raccoon's eyes widened slightly as the disc zipped toward him, spinning wildly. He knew he didn't have time to dodge at such close range, but he didn't seem worried. Ha! Huh, you think that little disc can- He raised his hands to block, but the destructo disc sliced clean through his arms like they were paper, severing them at the wrist. Raccoon's confident smirk faded, replaced by shock as the disc continued its deadly path, cutting clean through his shoulders and chest. The massive alien barely had time to register what had happened, before his body split in half. The top part of Raccoon's body toppled forward, his lifeless face still frozen in an expression of disbelief as both halves of him hit the ground with a heavy thud. Raccoon, G shouted in alarm, his usual cocky demeanor gone. He stared at his fallen teammate, his eyes wide with disbelief. How did that little guy manage this? G thought as he gritted his teeth. His gaze snapped to Krillin and his expression turned into one of cold anger. You're a lot more skilled than we gave you credit for, Jis growled, but playtime's over. Jis glanced over at Birder and gave a quick nod. Let's finish this. Krillin's stomach sank as the two warriors charged at him in perfect synchronization. This is bad, he muttered under his breath. He had no time to think, no time to plan. He had to react. Kyokan X5, he screamed, pushing his body even further. His red aura flared up violently, his power spiking. Just as Jace's punch came hurtling toward him, Krillin managed to leap out of the way, but Birder was already there. The blue-skinned warrior's foot crashed into Krillin's side with brutal force, sending him flying across the village. He crashed into the ground, his aura flickering, almost completely gone. Jace and Birder didn't give him a second to recover. They were relentless, charging straight at him to press their advantage. Krillin groaned in pain, trying to pull himself to his feet. I don't know how much more of this I can take, he thought, panic rising in his chest. He looked up just in time to see Birder closing in fast. Krillin clenched his fists. He didn't have a choice. Kaioken X7, Krillin roared, his body screaming in protest as his aura exploded around him like wildfire. The strain was unbearable, but he couldn't stop now. He had to keep fighting. Birder's fist swung down, but Krillin blocked it with a quick strike of his arm then countered with a sharp kick to Birder's ribs. The blow sent Birder flying backward, crashing into a nearby rock formation. But Krillin didn't have time to celebrate. Jis was on him in an instant, his red hair flying as he unleashed a barrage of kicks and punches, each one faster than the last. Why won't you just die? Jis shouted, his frustration boiling over, as Krillin spun and dodged with surprising speed blocking the attacks with ease despite the overwhelming pressure. Krillin grit his teeth, feeling the immense strain on his body from maintaining the Kaioken X7. He knew he was running on borrowed time, but he had no choice. Every muscle in his body screamed in agony, but he had to hold out, at least until help arrived. Krillin barely had a moment to breathe before he sensed another attack coming from behind. 
Birder's massive fist sailed through the air, aiming to flatten him, but Krillin had already moved. The punch hit only an afterimage and slammed directly into Jis' side instead. Watch it, Birder! Jis yelled in frustration, staggering from the blow, but Krillin wasn't wasting any time. He appeared behind Birder, bringing both hands down in a crushing double axe handle. The blow landed squarely on Birder's head, sending the tall blue warrior crashing into the ground below, forming a massive crater. With Birder temporarily out of the fight, Krillin turned his attention to Jis. His red Kaioken aura flared again, though it was flickering slightly now. He knew his body couldn't handle much more, and every muscle screamed in protest. But he didn't have a choice. He had to finish this fast. He shot toward Jis, unleashing a fierce combination of kicks and punches. Each strike aimed to do maximum damage. Jis grimaced, raising his arms to block the onslaught. But Krillin's attacks came too fast and Jis couldn't block them all. Blow after blow landed, each one pushing the red-haired warrior back. Damn it, Birder, get up already, Jis thought, gritting his teeth as Krillin's fist came barreling toward him again. Just as Krillin's punch was about to land, it slowed dramatically. The red aura surrounding him faded, and his speed plummeted. No, Krillin thought, panic rising in his chest. The Kaioken, I can't hold it anymore. His body had finally reached its limit. Jis saw his chance. With a wicked grin, he lashed out, landing a hard punch right in Krillin's stomach, sending the Earthling reeling. You're finished now, Jis growled, taking out his frustration with every punch, each one hitting harder than the last. After a brutal punch to the face, Krillin was sent flying back through the air, blood dripping from his mouth. But before Krillin could even hit the ground, Birder was back on his feet. He shot forward and caught Krillin mid-air, locking him in a crushing bear hug. Now what should we do with you? Birder asked, tightening his grip as Krillin gasped for breath. I say we crush him, Jis said, rubbing his jaw where Krillin had landed several punches earlier. I'm up for that, Birder said with a grin, squeezing even harder, causing Krillin to cry out in pain. Just when it seemed like Krillin had no way out, a voice called from above. I say you let him go. Both Jis and Birder looked up, surprised. Floating above them was a small boy with blue hair, dressed in a green fighting outfit with a black undershirt. A sword was strapped to his back, gleaming in the sunlight. Jis raised an eyebrow, unimpressed. And what makes you think you're in a position to have a say, kid? He sneered. Bardock didn't respond with the words. Instead, he charged, his sword flashing in a deadly arc as he swung it at Jis. Jis's confidence faltered. He hadn't expected the boy to attack so aggressively and he struggled to dodge the rapid strikes. Each swing of Bardock's sword came dangerously close, forcing Jace to retreat, his mind racing. This kid is better than I thought. Deciding he had to create some distance, Jace gathered energy in his hands and fired a series of blasts at Bardock, hoping to slow him down. Bardock pushed forward, charging straight into Jace's barrage of energy blasts. The air crackled with heat as the blasts exploded around him. But Bardock wasn't slowing down. He knew he couldn't afford a drawn-out battle. Both Jis and Birder were stronger than him, and the longer this fight went, the more dangerous it would get. I've got to finish this now, Bardock thought, his mind racing. He needed a plan, and fast. His sword had caught Jis off guard, but that advantage wouldn't last long. Then, an idea hit him. Risky, but it could work. I'll use the Kaioken, just like Krillin taught me. Kaioken X2! Bardock yelled, focusing all his energy into boosting his power. His body ignited with a brilliant red aura, his strength and speed doubling in an instant. He felt the familiar surge of energy rushing through him. But something was different this time. The Kaioken felt easier to manage, smoother, as if his body had already adapted to it. Maybe Guru unlocking my potential really helped, Bardock thought, briefly wondering how much stronger he'd become. Without wasting any time, Bardock charged at Jis, swinging his sword with lightning speed. Jis barely had time to react as the blade sliced clean through his shoulder, severing one of his arms. The red-skinned warrior howled in pain, stumbling back, but Bardock wasn't done. He reversed his swing, bringing the blade upward with brutal precision, cutting Jis diagonally from his hip to his shoulder. The alien's body collapsed in two halves, joining Riku in a lifeless heap on the battlefield. Bardock froze for a moment, staring at what he'd done. His chest heaved as he caught his breath, the reality of the situation hitting him. He had just killed someone. His hands trembled slightly, 
as he realized that for the first time, he'd taken another being's life. He'd been in fights before, life and death struggles, but never had he dealt the killing blow himself. A vague memory of his father using Krillin's Destructo Disc to finish off Zarbon flashed in his mind. But back then, he'd been in his Uzaru form and barely remembered the details. This is different, Bardock thought, his stomach twisting. He knew it was a life or death situation, his or Jesus, but that didn't make it easier to accept. His thoughts were interrupted when he saw Birder, still holding Krillin by the head, squeezing tightly. Don't move, kid, Birder growled, his deep voice rumbling with menace. You wouldn't want me to squeeze too hard and spread your friend's brains all over the battlefield, would you? Bardock clenched his fist, his body tense. He was faced with a choice again. Stop Birder, but at what cost? He didn't want to kill again, but Krillin's life was in danger. Let him go, Bardock warned, his voice steady despite the turmoil in his mind. Birder smirked, showing no fear. Or what? He taunted, tightening his grip slightly, causing Krillin to wince in pain. Or I'll stop you, Bardock said, stepping forward, his eyes narrowed. Birder considered this for a moment, his eyes glinting with cruel amusement. I'll drop him if you drop the sword, Birder suggested. We can finish this one-on-one, -on -one, no weapons, just you and me. Bardock hesitated. He didn't trust Birder, but Krillin's life was on the line. After a brief pause, he nodded. Agreed. He held the sword out, letting it fall to the ground with a soft thud. True to his word, Birder tossed Krillin aside like a ragdoll. Krillin hit the ground hard, but immediately started crawling away, clutching his ribs. Birder cracked his neck and took on a fighting stance. Now, let's see what you've got, kid, he said, his tone dripping with overconfidence. Bardock mirrored his stance, mentally preparing himself. Without his sword, this would be more of an even fight, but he still had the Kaioken. The real question was whether he could control it long enough to win. Far across the battlefield, inside Frieza's ship, Captain Ginyu's scouter beeped furiously. He frowned, glancing at the screen. Power level of 100,000, he muttered in disbelief. Frieza, seated on his throne, raised an eyebrow, intrigued. Who could that be? The tyrant asked, his voice calm yet curious. I'm not sure, Ginyu replied, eyes scanning the scouter's readings. But Riku and Jis just vanished off the radar. Their power levels are gone. Frieza's expression darkened. I see. Go investigate and deal with whoever did this, he ordered coolly, his tone brooking no argument. Ginyu saluted. Yes, Lord Frieza. Then, hesitating for a moment, he added, What about Vegeta? If he heals, I doubt Kui will be enough to stop him. Frieza chuckled, an icy smile spreading across his face. Oh, don't worry about Vegeta, he said, his voice dripping with malice. I'll handle him personally. Vegeta's eyes snapped open inside the healing tank. His vision blurry at first, but quickly sharpening. The liquid that surrounded him was soothing, but it couldn't mask the surge of power he felt coursing through his veins. His whole body hummed with energy. The near-death experiences on Earth and the brutal beating from Captain Ginyu had triggered yet another incredible boost in strength. He clenched his fists, feeling the raw potential he now had. He grinned to himself. This is it, Vegeta thought. I've become stronger than ever. Before he could revel in his newfound power any longer, muffled voices from outside the tank interrupted his thoughts. Damn it, Vegeta, wake up already! It was Kui, grumbling as he stood guard over the healing pod. Vegeta's grin faded, replaced by a scowl. He gathered energy into his hand, and with a simple thought, he unleashed a blast inside the pod. The energy beam shattered the tank, sending liquid and shards of glass everywhere as the pressure exploded outward. What the? Kui started, spinning around in shock, but he never got the chance to finish his sentence. Vegeta's second blast was already heading his way, vaporizing him on the spot. The air filled with the acrid smell of burning flesh and smoke, but Vegeta didn't care. Kui was nothing to him. Vegeta stepped out of the remains of the healing tank, shaking off the liquid that clung to him. His eyes glowed with determination. Now, he muttered to himself, where did Frieza put those dragon balls? Just as he was about to storm out of the room, a cold, terrifying voice echoed from behind him. Why don't you ask me yourself? Vegeta's blood ran cold as he turned slowly. Standing in the doorway, bathed in shadow, but with a sinister smile spread across his face, was Frieza. Frieza, Vegeta stammered, his mind racing. He wasn't ready to face him yet. Not here, not now. The tyrant stepped forward, his tail swaying slowly behind him as his crimson eyes locked onto Vegeta. 
I've been waiting for you to wake up, Vegeta, Frieza said, his voice dripping with malice. He gave a small, unsettling chuckle, sending a chill down Vegeta's spine. 